One of the areas we want to expand on in terms of our YouTube video coverage is around what we do in the lab with VMware vSphere, vSAN, and other VMware products. And to do that, what we've done is set up a three-node cluster that's separate from our main uh, vCenter and set that off to the side as a place where it's safe to go and explore these new features and uh, uh, show you guys what we're doing in the lab. So what we've done, Kevin has taken three of our Dell PowerEdge R730s, which had been sitting idle, and re-provisioned them for just this purpose. Each one of the nodes has been updated with ESXi 67U3, so they're on the current build. And Kevin, who never likes to skimp, uh, has put a pretty good set of hardware together. As you can see, we've got uh, E52699 V4s in here. Those are Intel Broadwell class. Uh, we've got uh, 256 gigabytes of RAM, so we're doing well there. On the networking side, we've got uh, Mellanox Connect X4 dual port 25 gig e NICs. Uh, each server has its own, and don't groan at us, hard drive uh, for boot, but it's a 10K drive. It won't be used that much, and we've got piles of these things around the lab. From a storage perspective, each node has four SSDs. So these are PX4, uh, PX04 SSDs from Toshiba. Three are going to be 960 gig read intensive drives, and one's going to be a 400 gig write intensive drive. So we'll show you how those are laid out for vSAN here in a minute. Uh, back end connectivity is handled via the Dell EMC Z9100 switch. It's a 100 gig fabric, uh, perfect for what we're doing here. It occurred to me while we were looking at the hardware configuration that we had already provisioned the disks in, in our vSAN group. And so what I've done is, is remove those groups, and now you can see the little error here, uh, which says that we don't have a data store. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that, because I think this part is kind of interesting uh, as part of the, the VMware process. So if we go into Configure, down to vSAN, and check out Disk Management, it'll show us that each of our server nodes has four unused disks, and we can go into claim un unused disks here, and it'll show a breakdown of both types of drives that we have. So all three nodes have the same configuration, three of these 960 gig PX04 write intensive, I'm sorry, read intensive drives, and then the 400 gig write intensive drives. And the vSAN software does a pretty good job of understanding what drives are in there and, and how to address those. It'll use the uh, read intensive drives as the capacity tier and the write intensive drives as the cache tier. It'll say configuration correct and, and off we go, identifies them as flash and, and so on. So we can go ahead and create that data store and everything happens in the background. Uh, we can see the, the task activity if you want uh, as it goes ahead and, and does that work. So I'm gonna drop that back down out of the way and really the important takeaway here is if we go into our, our sandbox, we can see that the NetApp uh, iSCSI share that we talked about, the terabyte is there, and the vSAN data store is on its way and actually being provisioned now at uh, almost eight terabytes, uh, which, is, uh, which is great. One other thing that uh, is worth noting on this as well is if we go back in to configure the services for vSAN, because we're all flash, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and turn on dedupe and compression. A nice little toggle switch, hit apply, and again, that'll be off and running in the background as it continues to set up that data store. Uh, we'll be well positioned now to have a all flash data store for the vSAN work. We've got the terabyte all flash from NetApp if we need the iSCSI bit. And we'll be able to use this three node cluster to continue to create great content around uh, VMware and its products.